a lot of people have asked how we travel with both a car and a motorcycle. Today we're going to show you how we do it. All right, so this is our setup. And before we start, I want to tell you a little bit about what it is. Um, the product that we've attached to the back of our coach is called a cruiser lift. And it's made by a company called Fastmaster Products in Houston, Texas. We did not receive a discount. Uh, we bought it just like any normal customer. So that's where our experience and this informational video has come from. Uh, the cruiser lift itself is essentially a system that uh, goes from the ground position where you can load a motorcycle and then uses this winch here to uh, lift the motorcycle into this upward position. Why that's important is because on motorhomes your tail of your coach is significantly further back than your rear wheels which means when you're pulling in and out of driveways um, any additional length is going to most likely scrape on the ground. Uh, so the cruiser lift lifts the bike up and out of the way so that that doesn't occur. So there are more manufacturers of products like this than cruiser lift. So we're going to tell you a little bit about why we chose cruiser lift. The number one reason why I chose the cruiser lift product was because it was very serviceable. When I looked at all of the parts and the ways that it was built, especially the winching system here, I knew that almost all the parts that the uh, that made up the system I could purchase at Walmart if a part failed. Um, there are systems on the market that uh, actually use hydraulic lifting instead of uh, instead of um, a winch system, and they're really cool and they lift it much uh, faster. Um, but I was very much concerned and worried about having a hydraulic system fail on the side of the road. The cruiser lift system is not what I would call inexpensive. Uh, the base package, which you see here, runs uh, $29.95 or approximately $3,000. That definitely is not cheap, but when you think about what you're spending on your motorcycle and the investment of what it's carrying and what it's protecting, uh, I felt that that was definitely worth the expense. In addition to the cost of the cruiser lift itself, you're going to need to install a three-point receiver hitch onto your RV as well. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is actually a lot of labor for a welding shop to do so. They've got to remove the standard hitch that came with your RV and they've got to weld on the new three-point receiver hitch. And since there's no three-point hitch that'll fit all RVs, there is some customization involved. A good rule of thumb is between six and eight hours of custom fabrication or welding time for the installation of the cruiser lift. The good news is that cruiser lift has a network of dealers that have experience installing these, especially if you're in the Texas area. So we'll put a link up of who you can call to talk uh, regarding installation. So now I'm going to show you a basic uh, operation in terms of how the cruiser lift lowers and raises. So we're going to lower it right now so that you can see how that works. The cruiser lift is designed for a class A motorhome. Uh, it also is compatible with certain class C, newer class C's that have um, the proper ratings. Uh, cruiser lift did a really great write up, which we'll put, you, put a link for right here, on understanding if your motorhome is capable of using the cruiser lift and also calculating what the maximum motorcycle weight you'd be able to carry if you did install a cruiser lift. Uh, obviously diesel coaches, diesel pushes are going to have uh, a larger capacity because they come standard with airbag suspensions typically. Um, that's not to say gas coaches won't support it, but um, you're going to want to make sure to double check with cruiser lift. You can call them, they've got some great support and they do have a lot of experience with different coaches so you can uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that they've they've figured out already. Uh, the cruiser lift uh, company does have a product for fifth wheels that actually adds a tire to the back that will uh, run on the ground behind the fifth wheel. I don't have any experience with that but you can check out their uh, website which we'll provide a link to and you can do some of your own investigating on that. So in order to gain access to your engine compartment you're going to need to remove this part and that looked pretty daunting when I saw it online so I figured I'd show folks how that works. It's really not that hard. 
first thing you want to do is remove the cable system, and there's two hooks right here. And once those are detached, it's pretty simple. It's simply pulling this entire assembly up and out of the way. And you can lay that either right here or off to the side. Once you're there, you have complete access to your engine compartment. Now we're going to raise the bike with the cruiser lift and show you how it operates. So because this is an overview video, we're not going to strap the bike completely up, but we are going to show you the remaining steps that would be required if you did have a cruiser lift before travel. Obviously strap the bike on before travel, that's very important. So step one is to install your safety pins. When you're riding down the road, the cruiser lift is actually resting on these pins, not on that winch cable. You definitely don't want the entire weight of that uh, bike resting on the winch cable. So we're going to install those first. Step two is an easy one, but if you forget it, it's probably going to damage your cruiser lift. And that is to release the winch as if you were putting the cruiser lift down, allowing the cruiser lift to rest on those pins you just installed. So we're going to do that now. All right, step three is to install this turnbuckle assembly. Now, not all cruiser lifts came with this. This was something that they added uh, a few years into production. I know we got one and we bought this in 2014. Uh, I don't think it's necessary, uh, but it does keep the bike from swaying. And uh, we recommend uh, getting a later model that has this assembly. So the turnbuckle assembly is installed underneath here. Uh, if you're interested in getting a cruiser lift, you're probably going to be on your hands and knees a little bit. It's kind of part of the, the process. All right, the fourth and final step, which is optional, is hooking up your tow bar for your vehicle. You'd only need to do this if you were going to have a tow vehicle. So if you look down here, you'll notice this doesn't look like a standard tow bar. Uh, and that's because there's a three foot extension here that brings out your receiver from the normal rear part of the coach back far enough where your car will not hit the cruiser lift. You can install this in two separate pieces by putting the three foot adapter in first and then your standard tow bar in second. There's a blue ox here. I think it's a blue ox alpha that we have here. Or you can keep them all together as one piece if you feel like lifting probably 50 or so pounds of metal, and uh, that's how we're going to do it today. And that's pretty much it. We're ready to hook up our towed vehicle like we would any other setup. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to the blog directly on livinglight.net, and you'll receive email updates of all of our posts. Yeah.